Greetings once more again. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel and also our Facebook page. This is newdawnministries.tv and tonight we are talking about how to fulfill your calling. Before we start with our teaching tonight, I want to remind you that this coming Saturday on the 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. we'll be doing a uh, free one-hour dream interpretation seminar. So I will encourage all of you, please, if you've got time, connect with us. There is so much to learn. So this coming Saturday on the 12th at 6 o'clock p.m., please be on the lookout on our website and also on our Facebook page and YouTube also, we will be posting our posters that will give you all the Zoom details. So if you've got any questions, if you wanna ask anything before the session starts, please contact us on our WhatsApp line and we will gladly show you where to go. Now, let's talk about the final part of our, uh, our series concerning how to answer the call. In this episode, I'll be talking to you on how to practically fulfill your calling. I've got three simple yet powerful distinct points that I want to discuss with you that you can apply right now in fulfilling your God-given calling. And the first one is you need to say, I cannot think of a better way in fulfilling your God-given calling other than saving. Saving is one of those most powerful tools that you can start and, and that can help you in uh, establishing your calling. You cannot fulfill your calling if you failed to save. So, and, and, and in some instances, when you serve, you might not necessarily serve in the capacity of your calling, but serving is very, very important. And it's one of the first steps that you can right now volunteer to serve in terms of your strength, in terms of your time, and also in terms of your resources. Serve someone else as an act and as a first step in fulfilling your own God-given calling. Now, look at uh, Joseph. Joseph served his father. He served his brothers. He served Potiphar be before God could raise him up to become a second in command in the, uh, in the nation of Egypt. Now, serving was a very important part of Joseph's life. Look at David as well. David served his father, Jesse. David served his brothers. And David served his king, King Saul, before he could resume the throne and become the king of the nation of Israel. Um, I mean, I can go on and on and on. So serving is very important. Important. And always remember that God will elevate you in proportion to how much you served others. When you serve others, you open up yourself up for God to serve you when you fulfill your calling. And I'm not talking about saving for the sake of getting a spotlight or, 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 or being selfish, but I'm talking about giving yourself up for to serve someone else. Serve another man of God. Serve another woman of God. If you are, if you are called to become an entrepreneur, a businessman, serve an established business. Volunteer your time. You will learn so much by simply serving. So this is the first point that I want to leave with you. And the second point that you can do in fulfilling your calling is to get a mentor. A mentor is very critical. It's very important to learn from those who have walked before us. You know, there was one man once said that if you fail to learn from others, you are forced to repeat their mistakes. Let me repeat that. If you fail to learn from others, you are forced to repeat their mistake. By just getting a mentor, someone who can show you the ropes, someone who can train you and coach you, someone who can show you the ways, you can learn so much and you can bypass the whole process of having to learn after you failed. 
You know, someone can come with their ex wealth of experience and they can just come and counsel you and coach you and mentor you in your God-given calling. I mean, I cannot think of any better example other than Samuel. You know, Samuel was marked, he was called, and he was also dedicated by his own mom to God, to serve God. So from birth, Samuel was basically given to God. Yet Samuel, with all the calling, with all the talent, with all the anointing, he needed a mentor. He needed an ally. An ally was a very experienced man when it came to ministry. He was a priest, a high priest, and, and, and it was ally who, who, who showed the robes. Although he was not even a prophet, he was a high priest, but he was able to mentor a prophetic guy, uh, Samuel. He mentored him and Samuel was unlocked and he walked in great demonstration of the power and the prophetic of the word of God. So mentorship is very important. Do not despise mentorship. And finally, you need to take a step of faith. You cannot fulfill your calling if you do not take a step of faith. God says the just shall live by faith. So when you are about to fulfill your calling, yes, you are called. Yes, you are anointed. Yes, you've got a mentor. Yes, you are serving. But there comes a time when now you need to take a step of faith in fulfilling your calling. And let me tell you, this is a last step. And this is a most dangerous step. And this is a step that most people don't take. People, they know what they are called to do. People, they've got mentors. People are serving. People are doing all these things. But when it comes to the final step, which is the most critical step, it is a step of faith, the step of walking into the unknown territories. This is the most important step. I want you to go to the book of Zechariah. We will be reading from verse um, Zechariah chapter 4, and I want to read from verse 10. Zechariah chapter 4, and I'll be reading in NLT in verse 10, and it reads as follows. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Do not despise the small beginnings because God delights when he sees any of us taking small steps, the small steps of faith. And God is encouraging all of us. He says, do not despise the small beginning. And let me tell you, when you begin to fulfill your calling, you will fail. <laughs> You will start small. It will look like things are not happening. But do not take, do not, uh, be, uh, do not despise the small beginning. Do not be discouraged. Take those small steps. For God is behind you. And God is celebrating you. And God is cheering you up. And, and God is saying, do not be discouraged. Do not despise. Because some of us, when we start so small, we think, oh, maybe God did not call me. Maybe I've made a mistake. Let me tell you, each and every one of the great people who have made big impacts in our nations, in our societies, in our whole world, they started small. They were not known. They did small things, but with faithfulness and with their belief in what God has called them to do, they pursued, they persevered, and they faced challenges. So you also take courage that when you start small, things might not start the way you thought they will start. You will not get the impact that you hope you will have. You might not get the, the influence. You might not have the, the support. In fact, some of the family members might come to challenge the very dream that has been cooking in you for so many years. But do not despise the small beginnings because God is with you. And remember, each and every one of us has a calling that comes from God. First step, 
volunteer your time, your resources, your strength and talent to serve someone. Secondly, get a coach, get a mentor, get someone who will show you the ropes, someone who will correct you, someone who will mentor you, someone who will celebrate you, someone who will show you how it's done. It is very important so that you don't repeat their mistakes. And finally, take small steps of faith in fulfilling your calling. And don't look at any other people. Remember, a calling is unique. So we've come to an end of this wonderful series in how to answer the call. And I hope God will really strengthen you and he will empower you in fulfilling your calling. Now let me release prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you've called us, that you knew us while we were in our mother's womb, that you needed us together, that you appointed us before times, that you knew us before we were conceived, before we were known even to our own parents. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave each and every one of us a talent. You gave us time. You gave us opportunity. You gave us interests and desires in our own heart. And you desire to see each and every one of us fulfilling the calling and the mandate that you've given us, oh God. It doesn't matter where the calling is, whether it's in business, whether it's in ministry, whether it's in politics, it really doesn't matter, but it's a holy calling that comes from you. And I pray for each and every person, Lord God, who's connecting with me right now to fulfill their calling. And I pray, Lord God, that you'll bring mentors, you'll bring coaches, you'll bring pastors, you'll bring people, you'll bring connections and networks that are necessary for us to fulfill the destiny that you called us to do. We give you all the praise and all glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's connect again on Tuesday. This is newdonministries.tv. Remember, we exist to equip, to inspire, and to enable everyone. Amen.